Monday. First item is public comment. It's for any comment from the public on something that's not on the agenda. Anybody? What did you just say? So the first item is public comment. It's for comments on something that's not on the agenda. Yes. Okay. In your name? Karen Peterson. Okay. Should I say what I'm here to Sure. I would like to talk about the pocket park. Um, and most of all, I it is my understanding that all of the work has been done for making it possible for that to happen. The land has been donated, the insurance has been taken care of, all of the legal aspects have been taken care of, and there is some reason that for over a year or more it has been stalled. And there is a very good reason why that pocket park would be a delightful thing to land off. People need a green space, they need a quiet place, um, it would be wonderful for the restaurants that are open in town to have a place to go for after or before dinner. It would be wonderful for mothers and children. It's wonderful for people who are in apartments and don't have a place to go, don't have a car. And it's a gift to Randolph. And I think that in the same spirit that Jim Sardonis's Whale's Tales are being accepted, this wonderful gift of the pocket park should be yes, and the paper should be signed. And so please consider that, and please sign the paper and get the pocket park going. People really need it, and I feel that this stalling the spirit of what's happening to our world. We need a little kindness, so please be considerate and sign the paper and get the park going. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other public comment? And, uh, I'd just like to okay. add a little to that. Uh, Tony Keller, um, um, we're thinking about how we can make Randolph more attractive to visitors. We heard the, the meeting just on Monday night, the R3 meeting, talking about that issue. How do we make this town a comfortable and attractive place for people to go. And it's not just going to be because it's the geographical center of the state. It's more likely that it'll be like Montpelier, which is, doesn't have a particular thing that draws people. It's more of an aggregate of, um, of nice things that make people want to be there. And I think the pocket park is just one of those many things that will make Randolph increasingly of interest to visitors and a place that whose economic condition will be improved by the more visitations we have. Thank you. That will be an agenda item on a future meeting. Thanks. Thanks. Any other different topics? Not a different topic. Different topic. That one's coming up on an agenda uh, but I am for a discussion. Of so this I, is to bring like up topics that you'd like to see on future agendas or to different topic, bring that. I'd like to speak to a different topic. Okay. Um, my name is Roger Golovsky. I am a member of the, uh, the Randolph Area Community Development Corporation. I'm on the Board of Directors. I'm also a member of the uh, Randolph Economic Development Council. Mm -hmm. Today I'm not speaking on behalf of either of those groups. This is not an authorized talk. I'm speaking as a resident of Randolph. Um, and uh, I think what we heard here today was an example of the lack of collaboration and coordination among the town and some of the various groups. So I think that's a really important appeal um, to emphasize um, and to try and find a way to bridge the gap. So I'm not going to speak specifically about the pocket park. What I'm going to talk about is a number of projects that have been stalled. It feels like there's political infighting. I don't know the details. But what I would like to encourage is that um, some of these projects move forward uh, because what we really have at risk is that the town of Randolph is um, at threatened the way every uh, rural town across the state of Vermont or across uh, the, the nation uh, is 
confronted with, which if we don't move forward, we move backwards. Mm -hmm. And things that will help to improve the downtown, whether it's infrastructure, <coughs> parks, or other things, we need to move forward with those projects. And there are projects that have been around for years, um, including the park and park. And that's just an example of the lack of cooperation, collaboration, and, and I'm not just trying to make a grandstand here. I'm saying that from uh, my uh, involvement with the different organizations, we've made proposals to the town uh, where we get no response for weeks and months. And there's no way we can move forward on projects that seem relatively simple when we're not even getting a response. And that's my statement. Thank you. Thank you. I've got another topic to bring up. Okay. Um, my topic is uh, water and sewer in the town of Randolph, um, allocation fees, and just the overall uh, price of water and sewer, you know, the cost of doing business in downtown Randolph. I think as a board, if you want to try to encourage business in the downtown, we have to do something about some of these impact fees on new business and lower the overall rates of water and sewer altogether. Um, I, mean, I have a business that uses a fair amount of water and sewer in the town of Randolph and I have felt the increases every time we've raised prices on the water and sewer um, to a point where it's one of my uh, most expensive uh, monthly bills to do business in this town and I think if we want to encourage new business in Randolph we have to do something about the water and sewer fees uh, from the allocation fees to just the water and sewer rates um, in general. Thank you. Any other topics on the public comment? Next on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. A second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? <clears throat> motion carries. Next is the consent calendar. This is uh, meeting minutes from the last meeting. Warrants, cemetery plot sale, and animal control. Motion to approve in a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? <coughs> Motion carries. Next, we go on to new business, uh, starting with a presentation from the Preservation Trust of Vermont. Oh. Uh, my name is Paul Broom from the Preservation Trust of Vermont. Um, as I'm Sure, you probably know um, we've been able to raise the money to um, commission a new set of new sculpture at Exit 4. Um, and Jim Sardotis will be doing it, it'll be in bronze. Um, and we're very excited about it. Um, and I hope you all are. Um, I know this has been a big dream for a lot of people. And in the community, and it's pretty amazing. Um, we never thought we'd get this far this quickly. So um, the plan is um, Jim is in process of designing the sculpture, um, and then uh, would be newly installed uh, next spring or uh, early summer um, in the same place where the original whale's tails were. Uh, this sculpture will be titled Whale Dance. Um, I've seen some of the preliminary designs and it's really quite amazing. 
Um, and uh, I've given you the site plan of the um, 22 acres that we acquired. And there's an area where the whale's tails were located that is indicated on the, uh, on the map in that oval shaded area. Um, so as part of this, um, it has been suggested that we see if the town would be interested in owning a half acre of land where the whale's tails would be located. Um, the land would be conserved and protected with an easement. Um, our, it's our uh, plan to uh, retain ownership of the, of the sculpture. Uh, but that we would be very interested in donating um, a portion of that land, a half acre, um, as a, a public park, if you will, if you all were interested. Um, and uh, there will be public access on the site. I think you can see that there's a, um, a trail that will connect to um, the land be behind the 22 acres and then connect with other trails in the, um, in the community. Um, so that is the idea, and I wanted to present it to you and um, see if this was um, something that you would like to uh, continue discussing and um, get your sense about how you would like to proceed. The proposal is for the town to take ownership of the oval? Um, we didn't do anything in terms of um, delineating what a half acre looks like. I don't even know what a half acre looks like um, or would look like on that map. Um, we would have to delineate that, but it would be in that general area of the of the old. It would have road access. I'm sorry. It would have road access. Um, I don't know if that's if that would be something that we would need to discuss. There will be public access. Um, as shown on, on, on the map. That's the, that's the red square where the old parking lot was, correct? Correct. And the, um, we'll be um, establishing a public right-of-way on the trail that's indicated there. What are the maintenance requirements of the sculpture around it? Who's responsible, or who would be responsible for that? Um, I would assume that um, the town would, although um, I, uh, when at some point when I had a discussion with Miles Hooper, who owns the land down the hill from the 22 acres, um, he um, said, "Gee, you know, maybe I could be helpful in terms of maintaining um, that." Um, so that would be something that we need to talk through and see what um, what your interests were and what your desires were. Um, we uh, will be responsible for maintaining the sculpture. Do you have what the what it would look like? What is the restrictions that you're putting? You said it would come with restrictions and all that. What do those look like and what is the I guess it need more of a picture of what you're asking the town yes, to do. No, what are you asking us to take on for land? What's the access to it? What are the restrictions of what can happen there? Yep. You know, will we be allowed to hold public events mm -hmm. on this land with the sculpture? Will we have the ability to bring in a vehicle to it? Whether it's with mowing equipment or whatever the maintenance needs are on that land. Yep. Those type of those are all great Pieces questions, are. and I'd be happy to, you know, if, if um, you all are interested, you no know, commitments, ask, I'm not asking for a commitment, but if you're interested in exploring this possibility, I'd be happy to sit down with whomever you would like, with Adolfo or uh, whoever you would like, uh, to kind of work through some of those, work through those details. And we're happy to have the questions, and we'll and to try to um, respond to them in, in that process. I think it's hard to say whether, personally, whether I would support it or not support it, not knowing what it is we're right. supporting I, or not supporting. Right. I, I, I understand. Maybe I could put it a different way. Would you be interested in pursuing the idea? Mm -hmm. I, and again, I'm not looking for a commitment, and I'm 
you would have full flexibility after working out the details and making a proposal to say, gee, this isn't what I can support. Um, you obviously would have complete freedom to do that. I'm just trying to get a sense about whether there's an interest in pursuing it or, or not. And if you are, that would be great. And I'd love to have um, the conversation. And um, But, you know, if um, this doesn't seem like a great idea, then that's okay, too. Um, I have a couple of questions. One sure. is the, the oval that's here, is that's where you're proposing where the sculptures would be yes. for right now. That's where they were. Oh, that's where they were. That's yes. where they were. That's, yeah. that, that's the location. That of was the original, original location. Oval. That was okay. the original and so, location. So that's where you would want to place the new sculptures Correct. in that same exact spot. The base is already there. There's concrete. Oh, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. OK. Yeah. Um, and so that's, so that's clearly visible from the highway. Well, it's visible from 66, I think. Not so, maybe not so much from the highway. But not from 89. It's not, starting down probably not from 89. But certainly because of the trees from 89, probably that are sitting on the other side of the property over here, I'm not so sure it's visible from 89. But it certainly will be visible once you're off 89, probably coming down the hill once you're on 66. Okay. One will, of the challenges. Oh, One of the challenges with the whale's tails were the folks that would get their McDonald's, go over and eat, and leave their McDonald's wrappers on the site. So there's a lot of things we need to consider with that and what's there. You know, how do we, does it mean we have garbage pickup yeah. on a regular basis? Are we, how do we get in there if we have to mow? Do we have access with a vehicle to bring it in to mow the mower? And, Lead wrappers and you know, those type of things are the, mm -hmm. yeah. the bigger piece. Justin? I might say that um, this little grove of poplars that grew up in the years since the whale's tails were moved, um, those are going to come down. You know, they're disappearing tonight. What? Which? They seem I, to be disappearing oh, really? right now. That quickly. Oh, well, good. Well, they look like me, like somebody's cutting something down out there tonight. <laughs> which, which I get off the highway. Which ones are those? Harry, can you show your map? Yeah, right by those. So right circle. here, there's this little grove of poplar stuff right oh, here. Oh, okay. Okay. What, so that thing looks like it's being removed okay. as we speak. So there was a guy there with a chainsaw knocking some stuff down tonight. So yeah, and that which obviously obstructs the view to that. Yes. So. That that all wasn't there when the whale's mm -hmm. tails were right. right. That would make sense. sense. Um, yeah. there. And so if, if you're proposing that, that your group would maintain the, the sculptures indefinitely, um, what, what's, what's the motivation behind having it be a, a town-operated and owned parcel? It seems like why don't just have you know, one group just maintain the whole, the whole thing. Um, I think it happened, um, this idea um, surfaced as we were discussing the funding for it, and I think that oh, um, there was a desire and interest in seeing whether um, the town would be interested in a kind of partnership um, in this, and we hoped that it wasn't, um, wouldn't be a burden, but would be um, an opportunity for the community, and um, that was, was a bit of an offer of cheap. We'd like to love to work with the town if you're interested. Mm -hmm. So since the article came out in the paper, people that I know who've lived here a long time have expressed a tremendous amount of support for this. So from that standpoint, you know, if we, I think that if we can work through, you know, the concerns of maintenance and issues like this, um, you know, I think we should certainly try to Oh, I, I think it's I think it's a wonderful idea yeah. to have this. I'm just it sort of sounds like one of the motivations is is just to get the, the town to contribute to the maintenance. That it's a, that it's oh. one thing that the that the town could you know contribute a material good to help keep this going. Um, otherwise, why not just have it be a private park? Why why bother involving the town? It seems like a, just another. Well, hassle to go through if, if um, the town isn't going to be helpful in, right. in that kind of way. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> like I said, I, I, I would love to see this happen. I'm not saying that I wouldn't support the town participating that right. way. I just want to get a clear picture on well, what, what, yeah, what people are thinking. Yeah, I can't say more than what I said, but this was um, an offer that was um, suggested in this whole process, and I wanted to bring it to you. And if, um, if it's intriguing, great. And if it's not, mm -hmm. I understand there's, there's some, there might be some very good reasons not to do this. I completely understand that um, um, those concerns. Mm -hmm. um, and is, is your group aware of the, the zoning issues that would have to change the zoning of the area? make some sort of exception somehow to make this a half acre parcel, right? I think we'd have to double check on the zoning regulations, make sure that it would be possible to yes. have anything smaller than yeah. um, it's, a, it's a five acre minimum lot size district up there, so you'd have to do a land use amendment regulation. Not as round bulk, if it can happen, it just there's a process. But you can't spot zone. No, you can't. So it means a lot more land will get open to half acres. But you could do special provisions for something like this, saying you could have a smaller lot size if there's no buildings. You know what I mean? There are ways you can craft it so that you're not opening up the whole district to half acre lot sizes. Yeah. Um, the, the, there's another issue um, that we'll need to come and talk with you about, and that's the height. Um, one of the tips, the previous sculpture was um, the highest point of the sculpture was 13 feet, and in this proposed sculpture it's 16 feet. Not a problem. Yeah, it's not. Because what was, Marty, was it 40 feet there? 30 or 30, 30 or 40 oh, feet. Oh, yeah. great. Oh, there's, there's, that's called oh. your sculpture sure, can so grow. So we can make it bigger? <laughs> make it bigger, make it bigger. Sure. I'm all for that. Then we can get a so you can see it from 89. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the height. You actually put a 40-foot sculpture. They'll get people coming from all over the place. <laughs> I don't know that there's enough bronze in the world. <laughs> they sponsor every foot or something. Yeah. But yeah, the height, I didn't think the height was an okay. That's great. Alrighty. So the question is whether the board has interest in having somebody work with you on what the details of this would look like yeah. and whether it's a proposal that would work or not. I don't need a motion. It's just, just a consensus it. thing of whether yeah. we want to or we don't want to. I'm going to try to work with the Delphone and see if we can. That would be my consensus. I would say, you know, I think it's an opportunity. I think there's a lot of enthusiasm in the community, so I think we should investigate trying to make it. Make it work. Yeah, I agree. How about that? Yeah. You want another task, Adolfo? Sure. Or would you like a board member to do it? No, no. <laughs> okay. So we'll have Adolfo work with you. Great. See what the details look like. Okay. Thank you very much. The devil's in the details usually, yeah, no, right? I, I, I understand. <laughs> there are a lot of devils in the world. <laughs> yes, yes, there is. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thanks for thank taking uh, the time and putting me on the agenda. I know I was close to the deadline of um, requesting it. So when we get this moving, yeah. thank you very much. All right. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks. Appreciate it a lot. So now we have an assembly oh, permit yeah. for the 4th of July parade. Oh, yeah. uh, I do not have an action item sheet for the uh, assembly permit, but uh, you have all of the necessary signatures with the exception of the health officer. Um, but from my understanding and speaking with everyone involved is that the route um, has not changed for the most part for the parade. and remains the same. The only same. difference I believe that's changing is the activities at the rec field, the rec field at the end of the process, the end mm -hmm. of the parade, correct? That's correct. So instead of doing it up here on, mm -hmm. on the uh, Salisbury Square and Merchants Row, it's all moving back to the rec field. Back correct? to the rec fields, that's right. Okay. Okay. I'll obtain a motion to grant the assembly permit. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. Move that. <laughs> yeah. It's your turn. I'm trying to do two things at once. You can move to uh, <laughs> to accept the assembly permit. I'll second. Okay. 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 Okay.
Motion and a second. All those in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. And then we have an outdoor consumption license application. Yes, this is for uh, Cafe Salud uh, that we'll be doing business as Black Rim Tavern. Um, they uh, are proposing to have outdoor consumption in the rear area where there's a small balcony. Um, as you drive into the building, there's a front, it's to the left of the building. They have great tacos, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And occasionally to use the parking lot. Uh, yes. Yeah. Which is private. Yeah. Yeah. Their parking private lot. Property. Our parking yeah. lot. My understanding is they're creating a platform. I think I heard that. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard that yet, but it could what, be possible. I think that yeah. Was, they're going to create a platform space, so this would be sitting on, on the outside space. of the platform. Is. But it's on private land. It's not yeah, on public land. Yeah, private land. Yeah. Yeah. Make a motion to accept that second. Second that. Uh, discussion first. Yep. Yeah. It'll be consistent with all our permits and we require a site plan. The ones that we've required have been on public okay. property. Okay. All right. Just make sure. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Next, we have a wastewater discharge agreement for the state lab. We asked, or I asked um, our director of engineering to come into the office to, or come into the meeting to provide more detailed information about the work she's been doing with state lab as well as the next following agenda items. So, so they've already, they've seen this agreement? They have, The yes. state lab has. Yeah, we worked with them at their last uh, water wastewater advisory committee meeting. Um, it's pretty basic. They, they have a good lab management, waste management um, plan in place, all kinds of safety <coughs> trainings, and there's always somebody in the building who is specially trained and you know, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so they've seen it. They're all, they're all on board. That was my only question. <coughs> Anybody else have questions on it? No. It's basically to try to mitigate anything coming into the sewer plant from the mm -hmm. lab. Standard. The benefit we have with that arrangement is that the um, their wastewater will get will go to gravity to a pump station, and then pump station force main all the way down to the end of the driveway and BTC's main entrance. So if there's like a major spill, someone can go out there and shut off that pump station, and nothing's getting into our system. So it, it's the likelihood of anything happening is pretty minimal. But this because it's more than just sanitary waste. We like to have discharge agreements with them just to ensure that all the safeguards are in place. Okay. <coughs> Anybody want to approve it? I'll make a motion to accept. Any more discharge? And authorize the golf home sign on behalf of the town? Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> One motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Maple Street traffic considerations. So, as you know, DK is redesigning, they're doing a road rehab and utility infrastructure replacement for all of Maple Street. Well, pretty much all of Maple Street. There's not a whole lot of work that needs to get done in that first block by Gifford. Um, and in discussions, neighborhood meetings we had last year, it, and given the fact that the right of way is only 33 feet wide through most of that street, um, the neighbors agreed, you, you all agreed, to make one way between South Street and South Pleasant Street. And it was suggested last year that they we make that temporary, just so people can see what it could be like and get people used to the traffic pattern, but it didn't really work well with winter maintenance because you're talking barriers and things like that and making it hard to plow around and stuff. Um, so we said we'd, we'd take it up for this summer, this season. And so that's one of the things that the neighbors, the residents are asking for. So Marty, that would be temporary until the winter time again when it'll be taken down? And yeah, I mean, unless we can finagle away so it's not going to be an issuance with, you know, snow plowing and whatnot. Um, Yes. Can you explain 
what the traffic flow is there. The one-way traffic is going away from the hospital? Yes, so that first block between South Main Street and South Street, Wiggett Street, that intersection, would be two-way. Mm -hmm. So people could go in and out of the hospital and out onto South Main Street going, you know, both directions. Um, once you hit that intersection, it would be one-way towards South Pleasant Street. So. Was it talked about going the opposite way? So the um, one way was coming to the hospital? I was wondering that too. I mean, I suppose it could be either. I think a lot of people just assume because most of the traffic is, that would go down Maple Street would be from South Main Street, that's a busy road, that um, that would be one way going heading east. Hmm. But, I mean, not personally, it doesn't, doesn't make a difference to me. And the reason matters. for one way was because the right of way wasn't wide enough to be able to what? Push that in the sidewalks? And the sidewalks without yeah. cutting down trees. Yeah. Without, um, without really, well, without actually having to go into people's yards, right? The right of way would have gone much, much we would have had to get a much bigger right of way than what exists even now. Two sidewalks or one sidewalk? One, one sidewalk. One. one sidewalk. So this is going to be very similar to Randolph Avenue. Mm -hmm. The problem is, Gary, you can't, you've got all those uh, poles on the right-hand side going down, and, and you can't move all that stuff. It would be imperative. Yeah, there's, like I say, there's a lot of stuff there, right? There's a lot of stuff. And, yeah, and, the streets, and if you, the go, streets very if you go the other way, you're going to go over into, like, into my property, four or right. five feet. Yeah. And uh, that's why we thought it would be better. Plus, hopefully, it would get rid of the tractor trailers going down there. We have a lot tractor of trailers up there? Trailers. We really? have a lot of tractor trailer track. Cutting across. Uh, it must be the GPS must put it down there because we probably have 15 or 20 tractor trailers down and back every day. Well, if it's one way in the direction you described, then the tractor trailers would still be able to go through in that direction. If it was one way in the other direction. <coughs> right, well, that, that's the third bullet point here is truck traffic. Mm -hmm. Right, that's a okay. <laughs> I think so, I most guess you anybody I've talked to, they all like the east better, one way going east. Yeah, but I think from an emergency response perspective, like I'm down on Beanville Road, so now an ambulance has to go which direction to get to the hospital if I have somebody injured at our facility. Well, then you I mean, get over to pump up, and then you got to cut over and make a big square. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Out back around, yeah. Yeah. And are the residents going to go all the way out around if they have to go to the hospital? Or walk? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if you look at it needs to try to justify it. I mean, this is what the neighbors wanted. There was yeah. a consensus. This is what the select board agreed upon was making it, designing it as a one way street. So. I think we agreed to entertain the idea. Oh. I don't think we approved. It hasn't been, been approved one to go one way. Okay. Well, we need to let DK know that then because they've already started designing it. <laughs> For one way. No, we agreed that it could be an option. Okay. All right, so so <clears throat> it's 33 feet. Telephone poles are in right away on that side. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Well, except for in front of Ken Borey's office because he let them move it when they were trying to move them before. And then it next down to 24 feet when we get past. Well, that's why I was wondering where does where does this no, where does this I mean because what do we need to be 12 feet wide? No, is that yeah, it does it is it is narrower than 33. Yeah. Per per lane's 12? It goes down, it goes down to one area. area. Yeah, so this this I'm not the right way itself it might be smaller than 30 feet. Right. By Jacks, it's 33. When you get down the other end, it next down. Yeah. yeah. Halfway down the street, it changes for some reason. Okay. Yeah. It's really four miles. We were talking about that if we wanted to make it. You know, with two ways with the sidewalk that we would actually have to widen the right of way. Widen the right of way, and yeah. it's going to be a big, big, big deal. If we went to two lanes with a sidewalk down yeah. through it. Two lanes with a sidewalk. What's what's the minimum width on two lanes with a sidewalk here? Twenty nine. Twenty nine. You get a five foot sidewalk and twenty four. Yeah, twenty four feet of road. Right. So your sidewalk there now is only like thirty inches. So the one we put back has to be five feet wide. 88 requirements. It's not that, so. mm -hmm. With a green space between it, doesn't have to have that. Only if your standards have it. Our town doesn't have those standards. 
What's, <coughs> my question would be, what, what's this going to raise the rest of the town? My street's 17 feet wide. Can I have one way now? I'm 17 feet wide. <sighs> yeah. It's two-way street. You're on the wrong street. <laughs> but if, but if, you, if you make this on one, because the residents want to calm the traffic, everybody else is going to want to do it. You can't spot zone. Oh. No, well, it's not zoning. It, it's the, the problem is, Tom, is that Maple Street, the road you're on has, I think it's a standard three-rod right-of-way, which is almost 50 feet. No, not on my street. Um, on Elm Street, yes, but not on that I think no. um, But this one, Maple Street, it's only 25 feet wide, and you can't accommodate two lanes of traffic and a sidewalk. And they wanted the sidewalk. So. We, we don't have two lanes of traffic and a sidewalk. We're 17 feet yeah. of pavement. So can we be one way? If, we, if I go up tonight and start petitioning the neighborhood, to be one way only around Mountain Avenue and Elm, Elm Street and Greenhouse and Friends, and we come down here and say we want it one way, how can you do it in one part of town and not another? Based on the simple fact that it's narrow. There has to be some justification other than it's narrow. I think the concern was that when we talked before, it was about adding the sidewalk as far as possible, and I think we agreed to all the way to Pleasant Street. Mm -hmm. That's what's throwing it into this discussion. So the two lanes can fit down through there the entire length. When you add the sidewalk from there all the way to the end, that's where you get into the right away issue. So up in your area, if when the road is redone, they it decide... It is being redone now, so if we want a sidewalk... Can I finish, please? Yeah. So when the road is redone and the sidewalk is considered, if it isn't considered, then the road width is different than what they're going through. I don't pretend to know what the right of way is in front of your house, but that's what we considered when we were discussing this one. Marty, do we know the existing width of that road where it's the narrowest down on Maple right now? There exist no, I don't. Right in front of the telephone pole by the hospital. <laughs> Probably. <Yeah. laughs> so oh. we're than No, we I don't that. know. I mean D and K's doing the survey for for the project to design the project. So that, once that's done, we'll know. But I haven't gone out and measured the actual width of the existing mm -hmm. road now. So it would be interesting to know, you know, once we if we put in this, the sidewalk, how how wide, you know, is the biggest road that can go in that space, mm -hmm. and and is it possible to have two-way traffic on it? If it's, you know, if once the tri sidewalks go in, if it's only going to be 15 feet wide, then that's not enough for two-way traffic. But if it was the wider, is, like, right. like Tom's saying, you know, there are streets where it's only 17 feet wide and it has two-way traffic. And but it was more than just the right-of-way was the issue. If you go full width, if you build out that complete 25-foot right-of-way for a sidewalk and road, a lot of the mature trees down, especially in that lower end, will have to come no, no, down. No, no, no. What I'm saying is if, if the road was... 18 feet, and also have the sidewalks. If, if there was enough space within the existing right of way, to have a narrower road than what, you know, than a 20, full 24 foot road, mm -hmm. but a, a, a narrower road like whether it's 18 or 20 feet or something like that, plus a sidewalk, mm -hmm. would that fit in the existing right of way? Right of way is 25 feet. So yes, if you had a 20 foot road and a 5 foot sidewalk, you could put the 20 full. So, both of those so in you could have a two way right street. But, but, right. but the curveball to that is the telephone poles would then be in the middle of your sidewalk because of where they're located in relation to the road. Well, that's, that's what, yeah. I mean, that's, and, and, and you yeah. have the trees that people don't want to take. You have the tree situation, so. Yeah, so it's more than just the issue of the wind. And so then if you do this, are they going to be parking on the side of the street like they do on our Randolph Avenue? Because that road's not wide enough to have parking on the entire street, but that's what's going on now. So is that going to happen up there? Well, I mean, I think the town, you all need to think about making some of these roads parking only on one side. Or no parking. Or no parking, or no parking in the road if it's too narrow. Because that's, that seems to be a problem you're going to run into. We're running into this more and more, and I think you're going to run into it up there for sure. Well, so as you make that one way, they'll be parking on one side of the street. I, I think what we're going to do, we're thinking about yes. doing on Maple Street, is the same thing we're doing on Elm Street. Yeah, you've got the sidewalk on Elm Street on one side with the full curve. The other side is going to be completely traversable curve. So if people want to park, they will be able to pull up onto the lawns. Onto their lawns. Get out of the way of the through traffic. At least you won't have full car, car width in the road. They may only pull up part way, but it's possible. 
Yeah. I think at this point we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, we are. But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> so coming back to the board, do we want the survey with all what the options are and what the obstacles are to make that so. decision? I think I'd like to see all that. I think I want to go do a site visit. Well, so I think once the survey is complete, we can ask them for a site plan with the right, right away is shown on it. So that would be the initial first step that they would do under any options anyway. We can just ask for them to provide that at that time so we can then consider our options. I think do we know what the traffic is down the road? And do we do traffic studies in town or on the roads or? Well, that's the regional planning commission does it. Just yeah. yeah. They have also our, our, two, our planning, regional planning commission can help with that too. Yeah. And that's yeah. down to my third bullet point here is the truck traffic that Jack alluded to. Um, it might be nice to get a traffic study done to see how much, what the volume is and what kinds of vehicles are going down there and, you know, which direction they're heading. If, if it turns out that most of the traffic is heading west, that if you decide to make it one way, we could, you know, make it one way heading west instead of east. Mm -hmm. But a traffic study would be... I think that's pretty much... I would say we need a traffic study here. And, you know, what you're talking about, Mike, for the, for the residents, wouldn't, uh, if the majority of the traffic was coming from Main Street, wouldn't it be, make sense to have it one way against it anyway to get rid of most of the traffic that they're concerned with? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't have a dog in this fight as to which direction it's going. Maybe it probably depends on where that traffic then gets pushed to. Right. I know most of our folks in uh, Crossroad, they're using Maple all the time, both directions. Yeah. And what's the alternative? No, the other no, item no. on this is the stop signs. The stop which signs, yeah. Seem we've to have just been put there with no. Pardon? It appears they were put there, but they weren't in the ordinance or didn't go through any process, so they should probably just be removed. I mean, I know the police have always had an issue about whether they can officially ticket people. <laughs> they can't. They can't because it's um, it's not supported by a traffic study. It wasn't put in there. You know, you don't have to put stop signs at where it's obvious they need to be, you know, coming out of Maple Street onto South Main Street. But when you're doing it on a through road like that, it's supposed to be supported by a traffic study that shows the need for it. Yeah. And put in the ordinance. Not many people stop. Because <laughs> they know they're not going to get a ticket. <laughs> so no need to have a True. sign in the way, huh? <laughs> oh, I see people stop all the time. I stop, I stop but I'm just... I stop, yeah. Well, now you know you well, don't have to. They can't write you a ticket. <laughs> 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 you sit on my front porch and watch a lot. Yeah, I was going to say, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know not everybody stops. Jack's got his own traffic I've, study. I've certainly <laughs> seen that. Jack, right. you need a hobby. Maybe you should take up golf. Um, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, I like it. Okay. I like that, you, that your suggestion that you get more input from the Highland Avenue residents before we move into signs. I feel like that would be interesting hearing what they have to say. Because that's where the traffic's headed. Yeah, it's going to be a prospect in Highland. Yeah, pot, pot, yeah, exactly. So. Oh, actually, it says here move signs of Maple, but it's listed one input from Highland Avenue. Did you mean Maple? No. Before moving this? No, so um, the no, it's removing them on, on Maple Street, but I got one person on, on Highland Avenue who said, can we get the ones on Highland Avenue out of there also? The ones that are through way on Highland, there's I think two intersections there. Mm -hmm. oh, should, should we be just look at all the Come stop all signs in town and if they're not yep. backed up the right way, get rid of them? Yeah. We'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. So we'll bring this one back up after we have the D and K survey and, and play out. Do you wanna ask then two rivers to see if they can do a traffic study for for Maple? Sure. I, mean, I, I don't think that I think they'll do that without a cost. Uh, they get transportation planning funds to do a certain number of them in the region, mm -hmm. right. yeah, local should, roads. So should yeah. we do Highland as well, so that way we can compare it later? Well, I, think well, that's, I, I do think you're going that's to need to because if you decide yeah. to change this and make it one way, you're going to see more impact right. on Highland. So it'd be right. nice to know what both yeah. streets are currently seeing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The next one that we have Marty on. Did you get the truck traffic thing? And you're still on this action item sheet? Yeah. Okay. The trucks we were going to wait for wait, the traffic study. study. Oh, okay. Yeah. So 
That'll tell us how many trucks are going out through there, which direction. Yeah, the, I guess the only point of that is sometimes we have large equipment coming in and they can't go across the train track there because it's elevated and they can't make that corner coming back from 12 back onto Pleasant or wherever it's under mm -hmm. being built. So that, that would be an impact to some of the businesses down there too if you disallow truck traffic during down any of those roads, I guess, or if none of them are How long? I mean, what's the maximum? We have 90,000 pound equipment but, on. But lengthwise. I, it's oversized load. It's bigger than a typical 53 foot, okay. but I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Could they get off at exit three and come around? Yeah, they have to, right? Just an awareness. That's yeah. what I know. No. Coming from Burlington, you do? No, I mean, I'll come from Burlington. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's from Milton. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. No. I don't think LED gets anything no. big or. But I do know that across from New England, they get tons of trucks there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was jokingly speaking with uh, a rep from the Vermont Department of Housing Community Development, and I said, well, maybe it would be a good idea to build a new off-ramp that just fed into the new business district area that we have. You know, he didn't say no, but he also was laughing in a very dismissive way. But <laughs> An off ramp for the Just interstate. For, yeah, off the interstate. Yeah. To, yeah. So. How long has Burlington been after one? For um, <laughs> between Williston and Burlington. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. So. So you can get happened. in line. Yeah. You're gonna be there a while. I got sharp elbows. I'll <laughs> get to the front. <laughs> All right. Next is Eva Loomis. So water wastewater allocation for a new house on Friend Street. Pretty straightforward. She just wants to put a tiny house there, and I've contacted the state, and the state's fine with it being a one-bedroom allocation. So that's what this is. Do you have any issues with that? I believe that we accept the water and wastewater allocation for Eva Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Or two fairies? Did you have any others on there, Marty? Pardon? Did you have any others on there? Yes. The next one. Next one. Okay. Next couple. The one at the bottom. The Better Back Roads grant? No, she meant uh, the land use the fee schedule. Oh, okay. So next we have a notice of intent to accept a water main off the Beanville Road for the LED Dynamics project. We, Marty and I have had some ongoing conversations about this particular request. Um, although we were open to you know, speaking with uh, LED and Green Mountain Economic Development Corporation about their request to have the town accept uh, ownership of the water main that is being proposed from from Freedom Foods to extend beyond um, to supply water to LED Dynamics. Um, we were open to the conversation, we were open to bringing it to the board, but a more recent request was to place a utility easement on one of the sections of, uh, I think at the beginning section between Freedom Foods and LED, that if it remained in place would potentially create a problem for the town going forward. Because then new utilities could be put in, we would, you know, at some point, I guess the initial proposal would not notify us of new connections. Um, and if we were then to go in to plan for the future or to uh, establish a, an additional connection, it would cause problems for us in having to shift over our, our um, right of way to, to have our line be right in the middle of where we want it to be. So we recently went back to LED. Uh, well, we went back to Green Mountain Economic and said this was something that was essentially dropped on us and you know we didn't necessarily plan on this and so we suggested strongly suggested that they revert back to their initial proposal of just allowing us the opportunity to discuss whether or not the town wanted to take ownership of the water line with no easements or at the very least with just the right one easement without a utility easement. So, overlapping easements. Overlapping easements. We have not yet heard back from our most recent suggestion to them. And that was earlier this week. 
When we have a water line serving a single place like this, do we have, in the past, have we gone up back and then taken on that as a line for the system versus the well, owner? It's, when Freedom Food was put their line in, because it only served, even though it was a native vein, even though it only served Freedom Food, they said, that's your service line. From the gate valve out down by Bimo Road, that line is theirs. They're not taking ownership of it. They left a stub for extending that line, which is what LED Dynamics will be tying into. And, uh, and now, Green Mountain Economic Development is asking us to take over the Freedom Foods part and a portion of LED Dynamics. We, to my recollection, we have not ever, after the fact, um, accepted a line that's was construct, already constructed without knowing ahead of time that we're going to be taking ownership of it or agreeing to take ownership of it. So if the town doesn't, then it becomes an agreement between Freedom Foods and LED mm -hmm. on how that line's handled. And given the way that some of that's going, that could be questionable. I guess so. It, it, it adds to right, the ongoing issue of easement requests being thrown into the mix at the very last minute or very close to a deadline. Um, so I don't know if it's that similar practice that's coming into play. Um, it's certainly something to consider that the discussion has been to request that the town take over the water main, but never has there been a conversation about utility easements being put into the mix that would restrict the town from doing what it needs to do or making it more expensive on water infrastructure that at that point it owns. Is that just water line in that easement or is there a sewer line too? Just water. Yeah, so just an inflow of water. water. Mm -hmm. What the town would own would be just water. But there, the easement, the overlaying easement that would belong to Lucky in that property could be any utility. It's, it's the access and utility easement they're proposing that overlays part of what would be our water easement. But that easement could go somewhere else. I mean, the problem I see with this is you put the water line in and then they allow another company to come in and put a cable line in or whatever you go back to work on your water line next thing you know there are cables around your bucket right mm -hmm. the other thing we have to consider is typically in these type of serial developments led would pay freedom foods a portion of the construction fees so if we're taking that over that line do we then get the fees mm -hmm. no they're so they're LED's paying an allocation fee to the town. Right. right. But, but they're also paying, Green Mountain Economic Development is paying L, uh, Freedom Food $17,000. Right. For, Which is probably 50% of the construction of the water line. Exactly. So if we're then taking it over, shouldn't we then get the $17,000 for future maintenance? We should if we're the whole thing. thing. We should get seventeen dollars from both of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little aggressive. <laughs> I like your thinking. <laughs> But I'm just saying, if they're going to pay the fees and it ends up being our line. What's, what's the benefit of the town for taking over this line? Well, it was discussed in the Water and Wastewater Water Advisory Committee a little bit. I mean, if there is further development on Lucky's property, and certainly there's potential there, although everybody claims that nothing's going to happen until ARA leaves because they need the whole property, um, that then they would be... <laughs> that. It would be, a, you know, it could loop around, it would be an extension of a water main that could potentially feed an industrial park. And it just, it makes it easier for that property to be developed if it's the town. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't prohibit that, to that sort of extension. It puts the right. negotiation of what the cost is if they're to use that line between whoever owns whoever the line, line and who wants to construct, or mm -hmm. they got to put their own line in. Which means they got to get across to everything to get to where they need that line. So it'd be an it's additional easement. It's fun. There'd be an additional line somewhere else. Yeah. If they outside of that easement. Yeah. If they couldn't come to an agreement, and I can tell you that there's been some challenge coming to the agreement so far, as you know. We have made suggestions, or Marty uh, shared some suggestions with them that would essentially strengthen the town's position on us knowing at the very least what new utilities would be placed on or in the immediate area that would prohibit our growth in the future, it would let us know, it would work with the town. As far as I'm aware, they haven't 
they ever replied to those Well, conditions? he verbally said, oh, he thought those would be reasonable, but then he was going to take it back to Lucky's uh, attorney to see if it was acceptable to Lucky. Yeah. We should have an easement right from the edge of the right away of the Beanville Road all the way to. Oh, we would. Yeah, it's not it shown here, but there is a dash line that through Freedom Foods property that would be an easement that we would have as well, and, and Freedom Foods is willing to give that to us. And there's no other utility easement on that, correct? Um, there might be an access easement, but I didn't. I didn't check on that one actually. I don't know what, the, what if there are other utilities in that water main. I'd have to look at their, their site then. Are they planning to put this uh, additional easement area that they want to be able to put other things in there? Is that going to mean that it gets like paved over or it's roadway or anything like that over it? Anything um, that's going to cause it to be at higher risk for repairs or... Uh, I would have to double check, but my understanding is, is that they would be thing. paved over so that they would use as a road all the way into... Right over the... Yeah. Yeah, that orange area is for access and utility easement. So it's both. It's both. Anybody could... Yeah. yeah. Right. So if we build a water main and then they pave over it, then if we ever have to maintain it, then yes, it would make the maintenance more expensive by having to cut into the pave and repair it and all that kind of stuff or... Yeah. What is the depth of the water main? Well, the water main... What are they proposing to do for a depth? It's going to be the standard, like, five, five and a half feet. Because Chris, when we were building the fire department, Chris asked us to be eight. Oh, because you're under that main road that's paved. That's we're not under the main road at all. Oh. We went through, oh. we aligned it so it didn't go out the paved area. Oh. He asked us to be eight feet. He's... I don't know. I mean, I assumed it was the standard five and a half or whatever. Well, that's, I don't know that's why standard, asked but you Chris asked us to be deeper. Um, right, so if you look where the, that, the blue part takes a 45 degree turn there, that's pretty much as far as what's going to be built for the LED project. They're going to take off of that line, but they're giving us the rest of that easement for future expansion, should we need it. The rest of that blue, there's not going to be a water main there. I'm sorry, mine's not color coded, but oh. blue is this 45 is that up here, the 45 yeah. down here. Yeah. Sorry, guys, you were, my yeah, fault. You emailed, yeah. The email should have been blue, but anyhow, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, sure you, I'm my good. fault. <laughs> yeah, so the oh, blue, blue part. This blue, yeah, but this is also going to be water main easement here. It's the freedom foods, but then it's this orange section here that's the overlap. Got gotcha, you, sir. Yeah, so you see that, right? Okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, you know, there, I think there are basically two decisions here. First, the, you know, do we intend to take over the water line? And if so, then we got to work out the easement part of it. You can see the benefits of taking over the water line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what, that was the recommendation. I don't like the easements as they're proposing them right now, though. I got a problem with them being able to just add stuff and we don't know about it or yeah. put the road. Yeah, a little you bit. Know? Yeah, I think you have to know. Is it on the same boat? I think water line, no problem. Yeah. Easements, though, you got to know what's going to happen in those easements. That was our concern when we were speaking about it earlier this week. We didn't like the idea of the town not knowing what was happening in its own water line. Yeah, change the language a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I'm just saying, what, it just needs to be tweaked so that we know what's in the easement. Yeah. yeah. So you don't end up with an issue where yeah. down the road somebody's got harbor in there and you didn't know about it or something. Yeah. Um, you know, as an option, we could, we could, the staff suggests that no action be taken now uh, and wait until we're able to resolve this issue with LED and Green Mountain and then bring it back to the board. Yeah, and you just, you just did that this week. Yeah, just a couple days ago you started? So fine. Yeah, so I think we can just wait it out. Is it critical? It's not is it time sensitive? Or not that I'm aware of. Not slow anything uh, down? I don't know because I, now that I know they're talking about having a closing on the property sometime between the 19th and 21st. Well, then they should hustle right along and get us what we need then. 
<laughs> right? Are you? If they, if they need that. If they need that, right? I mean, mm. yeah, depends on what they want. So, yeah, okay. I'm uh, thinking you just hang out and see what comes back here. Everybody good with that? Yeah. See what they come back with? All right, next we have a general briefing on the upcoming proposed water sewer ordinance amendments. See how quick we are, Shane? Got it right in there on the agenda tonight for you. <laughs> so, so, well, I just wanted to mention that uh, Marty and I have been doing a lot of talking about this, uh, really have taken a lot of the direction from the select board on wanting to make uh, water rates uh, much more affordable in the town. Um, so I just wanted to thank the board for their leadership in, on this particular uh, issue, like on others. But Marty has really taken the lead on working with the water committee um, on finding different options for, you know, how we can make things more affordable in the town. And so uh, she offered to come in for a briefing. So um, the last water waste water advisory committee, we did discuss some minor edits. I had a whole list of like six different things. Um, some of them are really minor, don't need to bother you with. But one of the things we were thinking of doing, and we keep coming up with other ideas, is to make the allocation fees a little more easier for new businesses or businesses to expand pay for. Um, we recently had someone come talk to us that would have an allocation fee of upwards of $70,000 and um, to expand the business. And so that's a big chunk of change. So, I guess you guys had talked about maybe um, splitting it up into smaller chunks as to when they're, they have to pay, because right now it's set up that when, if you have over $5,000 in allocation fees, you pay 30% up front, you pay 30% when you start construction, and then you pay 40% before services start to commence, when you begin using the services. Um, we talked about maybe making that 20% up front and then spreading out the rest of it over a longer period of time. Um, either in chunks that are based on when you start or, you know, 20% when you start and then 20% for every bill that you get billed afterwards. Um, which the committee was on board with something like that, doing it in 20% increments. Um, and then another idea that was floated was to perhaps pay that 20% up front and then pay a higher user rate to pay off the allocation fee. So if you're paying $12.50 for wastewater, pay $22.50 for wastewater, that extra $10 then would go towards paying off the allocation fee. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any particular <laughs> ideas as maybe other ways you can do it or to make it easier. So um, many, what does the allocation fee pay for? The allocation fee goes towards the, the water and or sewer improvement fund. It's basically, it's helping pay for um, a portion of, let me put it this way. Each system has a finite capacity and there's a value to that capacity based on the infrastructure that's in place. And your allocation fee is reserving that portion of the system's capacity for your property. And it's, it's the system capacity is allocated on a gallon per day, and so that's why the allocation fees are a gallon per day. You know, if the system's worth $10 million and it has 100,000 gallon, gal 100, gallon day capacity, then, you know, each gallon per day is, what, $1,000 or whatever. My math is that good. So, you know what I mean? So that if someone needs 100 gallons per day, you pay, and that then is, you have, you reserve your right for that capacity in the system. But then they pay for gallon they use as well. Right, mm -hmm. they do that because to run the system costs money. Right, so the allocation fee is a one-time fee. You pay it, you're done. So it's the like fees a capital collect, investment. So the, I'm not in the town. Yeah. Water. So the 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 monthly fees don't fund any improvements. It's just to pay for the no. cost of running. Operations, operation and maintenance. Yep. Do you pay like the bond fee? And the bonds, yeah, for the capital improvements. Those are in there. Mm -hmm. Better up so, the, so just to clarify that, theoretically this is like a depreciation schedule, but not really. Yeah, I don't know. Because it never gets applied to where, you know, 
in my understanding, okay, allocation fees have been paid to this community forever. Mm -hmm. And when it still came to bond for a new facility, was there any reserve money sitting there waiting to be put into that pool? So it's not a depreciation, it's just... Well, I, but it's, yeah. it's supposed to be buying usage. It, it, it buys, it helps fund capital improvements. That's yeah, like when you got to replace pipes and mm -hmm. all those things. Yep. In the whole district, not just the plant. Correct. Right. Any any part of the system, whether it's the treatment plant, whether it's new wells, or you know, replacing mm -hmm. water mains, hydrants, manholes. I mean, the funds are separate. You can only use the water fund to fund the water. You know. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Water. Sorry, goes to water. So it goes to sewer. So that we we had talked about making it easier for water for companies to you know operate in town to expand um, you do find that there is the importance of maintaining the impact fee but just making it less impactful to businesses so you know there could be a, a percentage increase every month something affordable where they pay it over time as opposed to right up front um, you know, we want to make sure that businesses have money right at the start when they need it most uh, but we also understand that the infrastructure is aging and we have to at the very least collect something for sure we're going to have some money and not have to bond every time. I mean like the, you know, the Elm Street project and the Maple Street projects, that's all done with, with reserve funds and other things I think that have been set aside. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and part of the allocation fees that were, have been paid. I mean allocation fees, we don't, we're not getting a whole lot for them. I know. Well, I want them gone totally. <laughs> I, just think they're, I just think they discourage the growth in business. That's, other communities I know have done away with them, so I don't know why we're sitting here trying to figure out how to grow our community, and we're going to slap somebody in the face with a seventy thousand dollar allocation fee. <coughs> yeah. But what you're hearing from the people is the rates they're having to pay for water and sewer right now are too high. Yep, I know. And you're going to make it higher. I understand it's what you're saying. Somewhere that it. money's got to come from within those districts I to get. pay for all this capital. That's yeah. a very much a catch twenty two. You know, the hard part too is Perry is like you know all the economic development, a lot of it is centered in the water and sewer districts, and that's a subset of the entire town. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it would be nice if, in, in order for, to help the economic development of the town, that maybe the rest of the town could tr contribute toward the health of these public systems. But, you know, that's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. You, can't, you couldn't get that done with a police district here. I know. That's never going to occur here. I know. But, so you got to look at the small subset of people you're talking to, the burden you're yeah. putting on them. If, if, well, if nothing more, and then I think we need to figure out how to stretch it out somehow. Yeah, and that's that's what we're we're. It so seems like there's some pretty good consensus on stretching it out. Stretching it out, yeah. Or, yeah. or cap it because if your seventy thousand dollars, your usage is probably going to go way up, and they're going to be a contributor well, anyway. You know, it's, it's exactly. It. I mean, you know, so if it, the operating expenses are based on usage, then you know, the more usage, you know, then it seems like you want more users on the system to help the system operate. So right now, there's numerous businesses out there that I know are not on the system. They're probably never going to be on the system. They're not going to. They're not going to want to be on the system. They might just take the tact of doing their own thing. So you have the entire Ethan Allen building sitting down there that's not on the system. So you know there was talk about getting it on the system, but you know that stops it. You know right there in front of my door on, on Hull Street. So you know those businesses down there are never going to get on the system. And that would be a tremendous amount of usage, I would imagine, with all the employees in that building. Ethan Allen's on the system. I no, think. it's not. Every time we flush a hydrant, the fire alarm goes off. So well, that water fine. system. They're on the water, but they're not on the sewer. <coughs> they're huh. on the wastewater. Well, two different. So, <clears throat> so anyways, I mean, it's just there's just certain things that, <coughs> in my mind, you know, if you were operating and you were at, you know, reaching this, I think that like any business, you know, there's got to be some um, efficiencies in larger scale here. So. Like I said, you know, you know my feeling. I want it gone, but so stretching it out is. Do you want them to look at what it would mean to the rate if they eliminated? Yeah, I, I'd like to know the, how. Yeah, how is this how is this going to affect the rate? And you probably can't really project that because historically, you know, I don't know. Some years your allocation fees might have been the revenue from those have been higher. Other years it might have been lower. Yeah, so if you could do some historical thing and show us, okay, here's what the allocation fees have brought for the last 15 years or something, maybe that would be a way to, to take a look at this and figure out, okay, you know, what did we take in? How would that affect the rate? And, you know, do we need it? I'm just trying to figure out how places like Hartford just eliminated it. You know, why did they, there was a reason they did it. 
How much of the town of Hartford is not served by the public? And I don't know that. So, well, yeah. probably quite a bit of it because Queechee's probably not all on it. So I don't know. I'm not sure what is, what is. on sewer. Some, some, some of Queechee is on sewer, but not all of it. Yeah. yeah. So, I you know, it would be nice to see what, you know, what those numbers are before we make a decision. So one of the questions, so, so when a business goes into an existing structure that already has the water, they pay the allocation fee then as well? No, because if there's, there's, it, it can be grandfathered, like um, it can either be grandfathered or if they've already paid for an allocation, it goes with the building. So like if... Somebody goes into Bell Means, they don't pay an allocation fee? It Unless they change the use. The use. If okay. they change the use to a higher, that okay. uses more water and wastewater, then like if the restaurant moved in there, they'd have to pay additional. It's the delta they pay. Yes, the difference. Yeah, Cafe Salute just increased their allocation that they paid for that. Yes. So they, they, they will be paying for that. So yes, yeah, so they, they, you know, the seats above where it used to be a restaurant, it used to be an apartment, they got credit for the apartment, and that counted towards the extra seats on that second floor. Yeah. And elsewhere. Right. So, yeah, so that's just one of the, we'll, we'll work out in the ordinance extending the allocation fees, and you guys can wrestle with whether you want to do any at all. That wasn't anything I was going to bring up, but we could um, also, Marty and I could also work on whatever over the last that you suggested, ten to fifteen years worth of income, year over year, and uh, impact fees for the town and. Yeah. Whatever it's turned into with interest over the last. I, I can years. easily do that. Cause I yeah, because it's how yeah. much allocation is right. granted to exactly in each system. And there's a budget line item budget for that, right? There should be. There's a no. It's just a reserve fund. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's part, it, but there's an. I mean, I'm not budget item, but there's an item. There's, there's, there's a, a number in reserve fund sense. that shows you what you put in each year. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it could be not all that. Mm -hmm. Are they separating water and sewer? Yeah. There's, sep there's two separate funds. There's two water. separate charges, too, but there you could have money that rolls forward because you didn't spend the entire budget, but also show in that reserve. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay. So you've got to break it out as to. So, but you can give us the. Yeah. You, you can say yearly what was allocated. Yeah. Okay, well, then that's probably the, just as accurate yeah. to figure out what was actually charged. Yeah. Okay. I think I'd like to see that. Okay. Um, I don't know if we need. I mean, but uh, that was the main issue, was, was I think one of the main parts of the allocation, um, the ordinance provisions. Um, there's one other one, abatements, which is, we just had someone, abatements are granted when, only for wastewater generally, when someone has a leak, goes into a basement that has a dirt floor, they pump it out of their basement onto the lawn, basically the water doesn't go into the wastewater system, so we abate their wastewater bill if they have a leak, an accident, whatever. We happen to have someone that had one that lost a lot of water. Um, his extra usage above his average was almost $1,400. And he uses so little that if we were to credit his account, that $1,400, it would take four years for that credit to get to zero. And our ordinance says that if you pay your bill, you don't get a refund, you get a credit on your account. It seems a little excessive to like carry over this credit for four years until this guy pays. <laughs> Plus, we, we're holding on to his $1,400 without interest given to him. So, um, if you guys are amenable, we'd like to just cut him a check for that $1,400 that of his wastewater bill that he, you know, didn't use the service. And you understand Instead of carrying it for yeah. four years? Yeah. Yeah. Can we, can we yeah. do that? Are we allowed to do that? Allowed to do that? I think ordinance-wise, we are allowed to do it. Okay. Uh, we didn't. We wanted to make sure that brought it to the board, yeah. so that it could also potentially direct us to, you know, make a change to the ordinance so that we don't have this scenario come up again. Maybe put a cap on the amount that would show up as credit, uh, because this is an extraordinary circumstance. <laughs> yeah. so, I would think we wouldn't want the credits more than like three billing cycles. Yeah, so yeah. Like that's what I was four saying. Yeah. Cycles. Four billing cycles. And yeah. On your average bill, it'll get paid off. You know, we could do that. I don't think we need a motion, but we could certainly do that yeah. on our end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems, it seems, it seems like the fair way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> the right thing yeah, to do. it seems like that's the right thing to do. So. Yeah. Blow that guy's budget for a few years, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. You, Okay. All right. 
and the only other thing I'm here for is under old business. The land use schedule, I guess this was before you guys in February. Not all of you because you weren't all on board, but you had questions about it. I propose. I think some of the questions that had initially been brought up on the land use uh, schedule is whether or not we needed a permit for demolishing a building on one's property or why there was a need to increase fees more so than what we have now. Um, Marty was not able to make it to that meeting and we just had not revisited the topic until most recently when we talked about it again. So much of, well, one of the reasons why some of these are either requesting new fees or increases in fees is just because of the amount of time that it takes for uh, the paperwork to be completed and in process. And also, with the revisions of the land use regulations that went into effect in January, there are now new types of applications that can get to the DRB. So this kind of accommodates it. And I imagine that yours isn't in red, is it? No. <laughs> Sorry, I can see the delta. Tony's expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And the ones that don't have a current thing. Um, Marty, can you point out which ones are in red? So um, basically, well, the ones that don't have a current fee. There's. Why don't we just compare them current versus projected? Those. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much. It's just a lot of clarification. Because sometimes someone comes with an application and it's like, well, it doesn't really fit on the app, you know, the fee schedule, and I, I try to best fit it, and if that happens a lot, I'd like to kind of get it on the chart so people don't think I'm just making up fees off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Would be great. Really nilly. What? I can say you might like that. <laughs> yeah, and so I guess there was a question about the demo. Um, why you even need a permit at all, and or why you need a fee at all, because you do need a permit. There is some time on my part, there's a recording, it gets put in the land records, that's $10 alone. Um, another $10 for the certificate of compliance. So, you know, there is an expense to administering a, a fee for taking down a building. But, I mean, if you guys want to eat the cost, if you want the town to eat the cost of that, we can make that zero if you want. It doesn't matter to me. How many of those do we do a year? How many of those do we do in five years? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's not many. Some of them we wish they would apply for a permit to take them down. <laughs> Let's not let you the permit fee be right? though. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's I really think that infrequent that you get it. It is. It's very good. I think I've done. Is that a request? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm, just, I'm just curious. It, it's really that. It's very infrequent. It is. I mean. It's just a couple it, of years or something. Usually you just yeah. drop the it's building. That. You don't think you got to have a permit for it. I mean, sometimes they fall down on their own, but there are some people, like the old uh, coal silos, you know, yeah. they got a permit for that, they're taking out another building, but then they got a permit for that. Um, you know. I've got one that didn't demo it yet, so I could come back and get another one. <laughs> yeah, so, it, it, seriously, it's probably, I've done five in the last seven years. So it's up to you guys, if you want to get rid of that, if that was an issue. But there still would be an out-of-pocket cost to record that fee. So there, maybe if you want to put it just to recording fees, you could drop it down to 20. And that wouldn't account for my time. That would account for the out-of-pocket expense to the town for recording. Where's the, was there a fee on here for ag structures? No, ag structures don't have to, they don't need a permit. They just fill out the form and you mark no on it. Significant, well, right? So I would say just get rid of that one. I carry this out of pocket expense to record the permit and the certificate afterwards. So you said 20 bucks. 20 bucks. It seems 
I mean, it seems like it's just in line with all the other ones. Like, we're just treating them all basically the same in terms of what the fees are and what your time is being reimbursed, how your time is being reimbursed. So it seems like we should just treat them all the same. I got to believe our permit fees have nothing to do with her paying, you know, no. reimbursing for her time. Really? We don't do that much development. At $50 a whack, do you know how many permits we'd have to produce to cover us annual salary and benefits? I think it'd be amazing if yeah. you're ready. Oh, oh you're, you're, yeah. I see. you're saying they're these not don't come covered. Through. Overall, I don't, we don't yeah. get a whole lot out of I would, yeah, these I, to begin with. I would say I take for revenues on permit fees, it's probably in the range of five to 6000 But what percentage of your work? I mean, it's not, it's not all of what you do, though. It's no, a it's small not. Percent, it's only a small fraction of what you do. Right. So... So is it is it Depends possible on the project. that I've seen some that have taken a lot of your yeah, time. Yeah, some you win on, some you lose on. You know. <laughs> right. So so that's I mean, so to get to Trini's point, are is is the amount of money that's in here that's above the filing fees? Does it does it pay for a significant portion of yes. your time to, to administer the permits? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's so it's meaningful in that respect. Then. <clears throat> I tell you, they're a lot lower than some towns. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you want to just, is there any, anybody else? Are you thinking just motion to approve the proposed that's, changes? That's what I was going to say. Yeah, okay. Well, go for it. I move that we accept Marty's proposed uh, changes in the schedule for the, for the zone. I'll second that. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Carries. Great. Next, we need to ratify the grant request by RACDC for Armstrong's Mobile Home Park. This was the request for an additional is one hundred and forty thousand, one hundred and forty-four thousand. That's right. Uh, it was uh, increasing their grant amount, which uh, was heard today, and I've yet to hear from the Department of Housing and Community Development if they were granted the additional 144,000 grant enhancement. We already voted on this by email, so it's just ratifying Accept the additional funding of the grant request for the Armstrong Park. Second. Second. Motion in the second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Next, we have the Uganda Village Fire Station change order. This is another one that we just need to ratify. Mm -hmm. That was the, uh, the, the bank. The bank. The bank. The bank stuff. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I'll make the motion to approve that. Second. Motion in a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That one carries. Now we have a service contract for Orange County Sheriff. Uh, we have not yet received the actual contract yet. Um, uh, it's still in the process. One of the uh, items I did want to share with the board are some of the points that I had discussed with the Orange County Sheriff's Department about what the town is looking for if we were to have a, a short-term contract uh, for a chief position. Um, and one of the items that we stressed was that we wanted to have uh, presence in the town, that we wanted to have regular presence in the town, and that in addition to oversight of our two officers that remain, um, we would also require patrolling to make sure that we got the most from our contract. Uh, the Sheriff's Department was very open to all of that. They are looking to have, if the town is to enter into a, a, a chief oversight contract with them, they're looking to have this uh, lieutenant, uh, the detective lieutenant, based out of our, our uh, existing department, and this would be their base for the duration of the contract, well, at the very least for the number of hours that we contract for. 
Uh, again, the Sheriff's Department was very open to that. They just have not yet uh, drafted the contract and shared it with us. So you need to wait until that's done? Or? Uh, well, I was hoping that the board would just review some of the points and motion to authorize me to work out the contract because the next time the board meets, it will be after. Um, Period of time is going to lapse. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So what I could do is, if, if the board would authorize me to do it, I could share it with the board, the contract at least the draft via email, yep. have the vote via email, and ratify it at the next meeting. Okay. So how does it work um, for like liability on a sheriff operating underneath our, our town? I mean, are they covered under their existing insurance and liability insurance? Does the town take on that responsibility then? So they're working out of our building, patrolling the streets in town. Yeah. They would, we're just essentially paying for their time. They're still under their own insurance. We are just contracting for them to just be here. They the same retain. as a contract employee. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And so for the employees' workers' comp liability coverage for their actions would all still be no, under the sheriff. Yeah. The sheriff's yeah. We're just paying the flat rate. They take on all the admin and stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, the duties, again, would include coordinating schedules, working with other local law enforcement agencies, patrolling, uh, being within the police district uh, in the substation, or foot patrols or, walk or driving patrols within the district on a regular mm -hmm. basis. Uh, Timing-wise, we would work with our existing officers with their schedule, um, but for the most part, we were looking to have this person here at the most visible amount of time to make sure that everyone sees that we're not just paying for somebody that's not around. Right. Yeah. yeah. So are we still going to look for additional officers? Uh, no. So the conversations that we have had are just to have coverage with the officers that we currently have or will have after our departing officers leave. We have spoken with Lieutenant Farmer from the Royalton Barracks. We've let him know what the situation is. He says that if there's an emergency when we do not have an officer on duty, then they would cover, but it would have to be really an emergency uh, when they are available to cover. Um, so the plan would just be to have our two remaining officers, the contracts for the temporary sheriff, and then also give the committee that you know, ideally would be formed later today could give them time to determine whether you know if one of the options is to keep the police district then we could then commence to search for hiring officers but the challenge is if we commence to hire officers now and then the committee decides they want other options then we now have a full full staff and we would ask them to leave or not ask them to leave really. it just creates a situation a more challenging situation There are options, part-timers and contract employees and things like that. There are. We do have two part-time officers that are sometimes called in to, to patrol. Um, uh, it has been a challenge to have one of the two part-time officers fill in. Um, we can absolutely go that route of bringing in part-time officers, um, but it, you know, we, we could do that. There are challenges with our two existing part-time officers in that they just sometimes don't fill in the shifts, but we could look for part-time officers. Sure. No, I was just thinking of the numbers. If we had six full-timers before, and now we're down to two full-timers, and we're providing the same coverage right. in the end yeah. until we make a decision. Yeah. So these are part-time people who are, you know, so the Sheriff's Department can provide, could they provide, I mean, extra staff? We could establish a separate contract for them to provide Additional coverage. So additional, additional coverage, right? Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. if the money's in the budget, you're not spending it because you've got the retiree. These people mm -hmm. retired or moved on. Mm -hmm. So it seems like you know that might be something we have to visit anyways, is to find out what those costs are yeah. to figure out whether or not we can fill in some of those gaps. We could do that. We've got some challenges with state law. Well, we we got to work around. And okay. you're also, your part-timers, so... When you go in with part time, it depends how they're certified. So, what level officer what level are they? they? What level so they are? So, they got to okay. get to a certain training point and status to be able to do felonies, to do uh, some right, of that stuff. Right, right, so, right. you got to be 
you can't have an entire department of part-timers right. that aren't certified or you can basically do a traffic stop until you find the drugs. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So you've got to have a mix there bringing in the sheriff's department. So bringing in the sheriff's department that. to do some of that stuff gives us that ability to do. Mm -hmm. Do we need more? If you have a stop that, or you have an incident going felony, Vermont State Police will come in too. So what we've had in the past is a, we've had officers that didn't have the status. They would get into a case, and as soon as they knew it was a potential, they would call and, and somebody State else police would or, or call the next call and somebody yeah. from somebody the department, the somebody department else would show up, would show up, take it yeah. over. Okay. So there's some logistics there. Right. It's but not as easy as just and then finding coverage. somebody. Right. But we're not lacking the ability to get those at that point, so that if somebody Correct. ends mm -hmm. up in that situation, they know what the resources are to help deal with it. Okay. That's right. There's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of red tape. And, well, and finding people that want to be a part time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Officers. I'm sure. It's, you know, it's probably no different than the sheriff's department. We've been after them for deputies. Yeah. Long time. The whole time I've been on the board, and we've got two. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, if you're okay. certified, you're able to get a full time <coughs> job. All right. Because everybody's looking. Okay. If the board were open to it, they could motion, or I'm not sure if you would need, need one, but we're open to making a motion to authorize me to work out an agreement with the Orange County Sheriff's Department, create some options, and then present them to the board once the contract is available. Sounds fine to me. That's what I think we should do. We need to move when available this. with the goal of July 1. Yeah. yeah. For a start. Yeah. That's it's very soon. Right. So I would say, move forward. Does anybody have any concerns with that approach? Sounds good to me. As long as you get to see the contract before it's executed. Yeah. I guess the only question is, are we bringing in Orange County for additional coverage during like, the 4th of July parade? We typically have, I think, most of our staff. Most of them will still be here. Most of them will be there for the board. Yeah. There, there are requests for other officers to come in. Um, Orange County. Orange County, County Sheriff's Department usually provides extra officers during that period. Absolutely. Of time. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Can I give you the direction you need to go for? It does. Thank you. All right. Next is uh, Better Back Roads <laughs> Grant. Uh, the town was awarded a grant to perform repairs on Hollyhock Road. Uh, the grant um, is to increase stabilization off of a slope that is in need of some stabilization. And I would like to ask the board to approve the town accepting of the grant, Better, Better Back Roads grant. The matching funds not all have to be cash, some can be in kind, and the majority of our match will be through staff time and actually performing the work. Performing the work, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Full business. Local emergency operations plan. This is an item that was delayed last week and would like to ask the board to put it off one more week. We, uh, we by we I mean me, I didn't have time to complete the, 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 the project itself, but it actually gave be more time to look into some of the appendices which include coordinating with our local towns, Brookfield, Braintree, uh, uh, Braintree to see what services they have available, what we could count on in terms of vehicles and those sets of items. Um, it also allowed me the time to speak with our uh, highway superintendent and fire chief so that they are then familiar and can update some of the numbers of equipments that we have. Um, it was briefly talked about during our last fire service advisory committee. So 
uh, a delay is actually helping me and that we're able to coordinate with other towns and with all of our first responders uh, in the town. Primarily fire, correct? Uh, primarily fire for now and some police with... A little bit of ambulance stuff too? or Also going to coordinate with the White River Valley. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Shot. Yeah, my apologies for the delay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Better be have it done correctly and know what you got than you rush it through, huh? Yeah. That seems good. Next, we have an assembly permit request from one main for a brew fest in the village. I uh, thought you liked your location last year. I did. Didn't get it back? Uh, no. Um, the whole uh, point of the Brewfest originally was the, you know, featured downtown Randolph. The first one was in downtown Randolph. Um, I'd like to bring it back to downtown Randolph. One of the conversations that Shane and I had when we first, when I first arrived to town, was uh, I'd begun familiarizing myself with the Brewfest, and I'd heard about it uh, at Ayersbrook, and I. Um, had not yet learned of some of the history that uh, Rufus had had with the parking lot at Town Hall. Um, since then, Shane and I have had many conversations, the majority, if not all of them, very friendly, um, especially after the departure of one of our staff members. Um, it did create some tension, unfortunately. But um, Shane and I have had conversations. We've talked about his plan for Brewfest. We understand that there still remain some items that need to be worked out. We have to speak with uh, Law enforcement, we've had conversations with uh, our current interim chief. Um, although it's not signed, there are just some items that she feels that as soon as they're addressed, it would be okay. Um, and Shane and I you know, have committed to continue working on this particular proposal if the board were open to, to either approving it or conditionally approving it. Uh, but there is that ongoing dialogue between Shane, One Tap, and Town Hall. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, it's, it's great. Well, I don't have a problem with any of it. I mean, we grant Chandler the right to close down Main Street on the other end of town, so I think mm -hmm. that having these events in the community, in my mind, are bringing people to the village. So I think that's a, that's a goal mm -hmm. that uh, I'm wanting to make happen. So I'm fine with it and work out the details of whatever you need to work out as far as yeah. safety and all that stuff. And we're, also planning, we're also planning to speak with all of the business owners because we do understand that there is, there has been some concern in the past about one you know, or two businesses that would like to remain open. We are expecting to continue that dialogue with them to make sure that you know, they're okay with the plan and uh, we're not going to let that go. Great. You've been through this a few times, so you know what the fire department wants and ambulance services and all those good things. Yes. What the liquor department requires, double fence. <laughs> What do you need from us at Delpo to finish that off? Just a, um, you know, a little blessing, or do you want to? Well, I, I would I would prefer because we have yet to have the actual signatures, uh, and not to to derail the request, but I would like to the board just to make sure that the town itself is covered to conditionally approve the permit as opposed to fully approving it. Uh, so long as we have all of the necessary signatures of fire, police, our health officer, I just want to make sure that. If we do move forward and the board approves it, that the town is protected with all the appropriate signatures. Okay. So if there was a the board were to choose to approve it today, um, it would probably be a good idea from my perspective to approve it with conditions that all of the signatures are collected. But usually we get yeah. a better map because it's, doesn't this needs a liquor permit, doesn't it? It needs a festival permit. From liquor control. DLC, yes. Yeah. And then there's other pieces to this before it can be approved yeah. that we need. I mean, I think in concept, it's a good idea. Yeah. And we can say that, you know, 
we support that, but we really need to see the better map of it okay. and where things are going and how it's going to be secured and okay. all those pieces before we sign off. Which is the same thing that DLC is going to need, right? It's the same well, exact it, map. It, and I don't know if you're looking at the same map I am. Because yours not in color. No, the problem is that I photocopied in black right. and white. So. so that one might help a little as bit. As but we do with the maker fair, I think we need to consider the impact of businesses. So right, you got to check with the businesses. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm totally... I mean, this is like the first sure step. The Are you even willing to consider it, in my opinion, is what yeah. this is. And yes, we're willing to consider it. But I think we need to have that conversation with the, the businesses right. and how that works and how people right. would move around to if a business is open. Because you've got to secure the area because you're serving alcohol in it. Right. And... The perimeter fence that I've put on the site map that you have there um, takes into consideration all the businesses that are open on a Saturday. And I've spoken to uh, you know Jan from the Blue Moon; um, she's all for it. You know Sarah from the Crim. Um, all the other businesses on Main Street, Claire Martin, the banks are all closed on Saturday. Um, so where that perimeter fence is proposed is before this intersection so you still have access to like Rite Aid, um, some of the businesses that are open on Saturdays. Um, I mean, I did take that into account when I drafted We had a lot of trouble with the Merchants Row folks, didn't we? On the, 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 old, the only person. Because they're open till noon or whatever. Yeah. yeah Typically, in in our in my past experience, the only one that has a problem with that is uh, the manager of Federated, um, Ron, mm -hmm. and uh, and I've spoken with him briefly about it. Um, and as much as his concerns have been voiced over the last few years that we've had festivals on uh, Merchants Row, um, not one of them has been stopped because of it. Um, and his well, we have, we, we, we did. closed only half the street. So right, we adjusted the area. Yeah, right? and, and in, nothing can be set map, up in a I certain area. I adjusted that as well. So well, we it only, only goes down the as far only, as, what's that? The Maker's Fair, we only allowed them to set up half of the street. Yeah, that's basically And they had what, to wait until after they after closed the and whatnot, the then they could yeah. set the rest of it up. Yeah, and so at this, I mean, this is Samus's building right here. So that's pretty much the same thing. It's a halfway down Merchant's Row. This is saying all of them. Yeah, but you've got to, that's what we need to see. How, if I want to go, if I want to come into town and go to Federated, how am I going to get to there Saturday morning at 1130? Right, they have two entrances. One of them would be accessible from Merchant's Row obviously coming from the Pleasant Street side. Mm -hmm. And then they also have a back entrance uh, where the Red Lion entrance is um, as well, which is not on Merchant's Row. But that's some of the stuff that's got to be worked out so mm -hmm. that you're comfortable that we can't close them out. I agree. And that's one of the things that Shane and I had previously talked about and we use the Maker's Fair from last year is an example of half closure or other issues. Half closure so. wasn't down Merchant's Row, it was half of Merchant's Row. So well, they that, still had vehicle traffic through there until right. those businesses closed. Yeah, it was the uh, parking spaces that we allowed closed up from there. So mm -hmm. it fits into this one way and it's narrow. Okay. So some of it could be set up, but people could still get to where they need to for those businesses. So if I had some sort of signed agreement with the parts store to coincide with this map, that would suffice? What we just need to understand is that the businesses under, know what's going on right. and they're on board with it. Okay. So, so would that be a, a letter of approval with their signature on it? If they want to write a letter I mean, to us that says it. They want to write a letter of acknowledgement just so they know that this is going to be this happening is, right. and they're, they're, they're having no problem with it. I think that would be the... Would you think that would be the best thing? Just to, yeah, somebody wants to jot you down a note and say, yeah, we're totally aware of this and we're supportive of it or something like that or it doesn't, we don't feel it affect us, then I think that's probably the, 
the cleanest way to get it because that way they can't come back to us and say, hey, you know, right. like we have something with their signature on it, so yeah, we're, we're okay with this. That would be, I think, covers everybody. Covers you, covers us. Perfect. says we need access until right. noon, and the plan you submit needs to show how they're going to have access until noon. Yeah. Okay. I think that's somebody just going to work it out with them. Yep. Almost everybody thinks agreeable to this stuff, so... So it's a bit shame uh, you and I can keep working. Uh, we could bring it back if the board uh, would yeah. approve at the next select board meeting. But in the meantime, Shane and I can just continue working on making sure that we dot our I's and cross our T's. Yep. Seems, seems good to me. Huh? Just don't want to get hung out here saying we did something <laughs> that we shouldn't have done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Thanks, Shane. Yeah. All righty. Uh, reset new public hearing date for land use regulation amendment. Uh, we had previously set today as a public hearing date, but uh, staff did not warn the hearing properly or within the allotted amount of time. So we were hoping that we would reset the date. Um, Just move it back a month. Yeah. We set again similar to this time. Right before the select board meeting, we could have that. So, five o'clock on uh, July 12th. Yeah. 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 Okay. That gives us enough time this time, right? It will absolutely give us enough time. We'll make sure that we get it out okay. to notice at the very least as quickly as possible. Okay. Is it very good with coming in? ahead of the normal scheduled meeting. I am. Think I can. If the board would like, we could also start the hearing at 5.30 and then start the meeting at 6. We could start at the same time. We could be here into the morning of the next day, too. But <laughs> sure. That's how much stuff you put on your agenda. <laughs> yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> We're moving quickly, though. Hi, right, we're right, right, yeah. fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> All right. So, do that one at 5 on the 12th. Resolution request from Muscoma Bank. Yes, this is uh, part of the ongoing conversation we've had about refinancing the town property um, at 45 South Main Street. Muscoma Bank has requested that we approve the items on their uh, contract and it it's basically mm -hmm. staff and i have reviewed it it's basically that we approve uh repayment that this was approved by the elected body of the town that the town <coughs> is going to repay the loan that the individuals listed above uh, or listed on the agreement are authorized <coughs> to enter the town into these sets of agreements um, it's everything that we have already discussed. Uh, we voted, you know, the, the town voted at last town meeting, but Muscoma Bank requires that we actually have their signatures on their particular form that agrees to all of this. So, uh, I actually left the original form up on my desk, so I have to bring that down and have it signed. So that will be that. Do we have to fill in the blank on page two? Actually, page three of the handout, but it's labeled page two on the use of the proceeds. Uh, I could fill that in with uh, our town treasurer. She's been communicating with Mesco on a regular basis, so we could we could fill that in. Uh, uh, our Eves Bradley, who is our realtor with Armelo, says that we've had some interest. He's actually, he hasn't given any tours, but he's had people contact him. And he also created a great, you know, um, uh, property sheet that looks, looks great. Uh, they're planning to send that out soon. Uh, no tours yet.
resolution on the Mescoma Bank resolution. Your turn. <laughs> Yes, I make a motion that we accept the terms Nestle and Bates refinance application packet for the town of Randolph for 45 South Main Street. Second. Repeat your to it. Motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Next up is other business. Uh, there's no other business that the town staff would like to bring. Uh, I'll, I'll be brief, but there are a few items I'd like to point out for it to be shared with the board. Um, there have been just a part of the ongoing conversation with uh, the Randolph Area Community Development Corporation. We are continuing to speak with them about their downtown designation funding. We understand there is a deadline that is approaching about um, the end of the fiscal year. So um, I'm working to review all the information that they shared, uh, and I hope to have the issue resolved very soon. The conversation of the pocket park still continues. Um, we have, last meeting that we had was approximately two months ago, um, and since then we've had conversations via email about the actual item. Uh, the three sticking points remain, uh, subrogation, indemnification, and um, uh, third item maintenance. So, um, you know, hope to have that resolved soon. But there is less of a deadline with the pocket park than there is with downtown designation funding. Uh, the local emergency operation plan, briefly touched on. Uh, we're looking to have uh, more detail in the current plan and make sure that all the information that's listed on there is up to date, including equipment for fire, equipment with police equipment that is available through other towns, uh, Bethel, Brookfield, Braintree. Uh, so we're coordinating, uh, coordinating with them. Uh, as part of that conversation, I started a second conversation with uh, Fire Advisory about something that I feel the town would benefit from, and that is coordinating a regional uh, emergency operations scenario um, where all of our neighboring towns would come together and uh, complete a scenario over the next six to nine months. The state feels, I had a conversation with the state today about coordinating a, an emergency scenario of a hurricane or a catastrophe of some kind and, and told them that, you know, I was thinking of including Brookfield Bain, Braintree in our neighboring towns. They think it would be great. They think that they could support this in a number of different ways, either through planning or financing or whatever it is. Um, so I at some point would like to reach out to my counterparts in the other towns just to see if they would also be interested in having a revisit to the Hurricane Irene scenario where we could recreate that whole scenario and see how we would all respond. Um, that's part of an ongoing conversation. Which actually leads into the next topic which is a full inventory of all of our equipment. I've asked all of our directors to, uh, by the end of next month, provide town manager's office with a full inventory of everything they have. Uh, that would include fire police, highway, water, wastewater. Uh, want to make sure that the town has um, a very up-to-date inventory list in case we have another emergency where we lose one of our buildings. We know exactly what was in there and what was recently purchased. Um, uh, our most recent fire advisory, you know, we, we spoke about this. Uh, our fire chief seemed to be open to completing it as quickly as possible. And, I know the fire and highway are also working on their, on their inventory. Uh, next item is tax stabilization. I have been speaking with uh, uh, Keegan and Lindsay Hopp who are working on developing a new building in town. Uh, they have a recreation component to it. They had visited the town uh, hall offices to ask if there was some assistance that they could have with their new construction. Uh, I shared with them a, a couple of different ideas, one including tax stabilization and shared with them the tax stabilization process. So they are in the process of looking at the material, 
pulling as much uh, information as they can together and at some point hope to introduce a tax stabilization request to the select board for consideration. So that's something. Are they in the confines of the downtown designation district? They. Is that in that area or not? Are they out just outside of that? They're on the edge of it, I think. I think they may be right on the. Think they're in it? I think they, I believe they're in it because it crosses over the bridge and shoots over to the left and to the right, more so to uh, heading toward the park on the left uh, I'm sorry, he more so uh, heading up 66 up Flag Hill on the right than on the left, but their building would be, I believe, within the confines. So yeah. there, there could be some advantages to help them in that process? Yes, absolutely. So, so they should need to have a little conversation with our... I have sent them over to okay. her. Um, I don't believe they've received a response yet, um, mm -hmm. but I... Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, just want to know what's going on. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll reach out again to Lindsay and Keegan to see if they've actually received a response from the managers of our downtown designation program. Okay. Uh, and the last thing is, uh, earlier today I received a call from, uh, it's a gentleman's name, but uh, he coordinates the Green Mountain Stage Race. Um, he's looking to uh, approach the town again to allow the town to, or to allow him to establish a leg of his race in the town. He's expecting about 600 to 900 bicyclists. Um, they have a target date of Saturday, September 1. Um, I have shared with him a, uh, an assembly permit so he can fill it out, complete it, um, uh, and they are open to doing that as quickly as possible. So. I've uh, instructed him that if he submits all the material, we'll share it with the board, and if necessary, bring it to the board to the next select board meeting. Okay, where might want to stop, maybe, or? Oh, this thing, we had it on the from last year, but the saving project. Right, the saving project pushed it out. Where, so, yeah, so where was it? Stage at the high school? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, is that New World Festival, September 1st? No, that's on Sunday. That would be Sunday. The setup is on yeah, Sunday. Yeah. Okay. It's closed off on Sunday. They start Sunday. Sunday, on. yeah, well, we set up usually on Friday and part okay. of Saturday, but that stuff doesn't affect the street yeah. until Sunday. Okay. They race them out through Braintree to Northfield and back around. Yeah. Um, I hear for us. Okay. Uh, so that was just more of um, an advance notice of something that we're working on. I'll bring that to the board as soon as we have the material pulled together for you. Something coming to town, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Good stuff. Uh, and that is all for manager's report for this month. So this is the bucket park. You're you're feeling like you're close, but it's not urgent. Like do you have a sense of when that realistically <sighs> might I it really for I think the challenge is that there are two different perspectives. There's one perspective of the town, which is we want to make sure that the town and the taxpayers and the taxpayers' money is protected. Uh, and then the other is the other perspective of, well, this would be great. The town needs to do it. The town has to do it. But there's no real regard for long-term potential legal issues. Um, the town is, at some points, entering into an agreement to, to ensure private property. Um, so we want to make sure that if we do take that step, that the property owner then doesn't decide, well, we're just going to leave. We're going to do no, what no, we want. I, I understand. I'm, just, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just trying to get a sense of how close you think we are. Um, I, I think we're, if the other parties were just to say, great, you know, if some long-term catastrophe happens, if some kid decides or develops, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen, but, you know, some kind of retinoblastoma cancer or any kind of cancer because of what may be in the ground, that they then would take responsibility for it as opposed to the taxpayer. You know, if they agreed to something like that, they'd say, absolutely, I'll bring it to the board, here's the agreement, great. Uh, the challenge is that the property owners are saying, no, we, want, we don't want to be liable for anything. We are agreeing to let the town do this on this property, but really they're allowing our ACDC to do this on the property, not the town. We're just, we were invited to participate just to provide insurance coverage. Um, which is great on the daily day, but when we have some of these potential long-term costs, um, want to make sure that 
were just not left on the hook and the property owner just goes away. Um, so they are not as willing to, to give in on that part because they also don't want to be responsible for something that were to happen. Um, so they are being very protective of you know their future stability just like we are with the town's future stability. So there's, there's that one challenge. I think we could, we could easily agree on the maintenance. Uh, that portion of it, I believe, RACDC has committed to, at the very least, considering not forcing the town or asking the town to perform the maintenance because it would be just as an inconvenience to us as it would be to their property management firm. Uh, and the other portion of uh, subrogation is if we waive that, then we wouldn't be, then we would essentially be telling our insurance company, you can't sue the property owner if the town chooses to not sue the property owner. Uh, and we're actually involved in a subrogation suit now that is, hopefully if it goes well, will benefit the town and the taxpayer. Right. So. And the beleaguered cities and towns will allow you to sign an agreement with no subrogation yeah. clauses. They would come in and pay the claim originally and then they'll go if they feel that it mm -hmm. rightfully belongs somewhere else, they want the ability to take that action. And yeah. That's a tough one to there was a claim made earlier, and I would like to clarify the claim that there's been no communication between the parties, that there's there have been proposals submitted um, to the town, and we've, we've actually had meetings with you know, the organizations, we've talked to them. We had one meeting scheduled where all three of us were supposed to come, and one of the other two members canceled at the last minute, so we canceled that meeting because they canceled. Um, since then, there have been some challenges, but we've had at the very least three or five meetings between now and the last three or four months. So there isn't that there isn't communication there. It's just that the other parties aren't happy with the communication coming from us, which is we have just as much right to protect the town and the ta town taxpayer as they do to protect their long-term financial stability. So I think that's a point that I'd like to clarify. If there is that dialogue, it's just not what they want to hear. Motion to go into executive session. Motion in the second to go into executive session. All those in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye. Aye.